Hey, you're about to watch a message from our latest Dig Deep Bible study at Fort City Church. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, if you want to stay connected with all things DRJG, visit me at drjackiegreen.com. That's all the latest and greatest. I want to make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime we go live with brand new content. I love you. I pray that you share this message if it transforms your life. See you soon. Y'all, we're going to do this girl talk style tonight. It's not real. I don't really got a lot of performance tonight. I told these girls that God is not asking his daughters to perform. He's asking them to obey. Amen. That just like I'm up here obeying, I need you from your seats to obey as well. That we're equal in the sight of the Lord. That just because I'm on this platform, my yes is no more important than yours. I pray tonight whatever he's asking for from you, that you give it to him. Whatever he's asking from for you online, that you would give him the yes that he's after. I'll tell you on the other side of yes, there is all these things that you've been searching for. You know how you've seen those glimpses of the woman that you are in your dreams and you see yourself talking boldly and you see yourself living out visions and dreams. I want that, that, that dream to come become reality. That's what we're praying for tonight. The Lord started stirring my heart with this idea of birthing more and believing him for more and allowing him to do something in our life that he hasn't done already. Maybe you've just gotten used to marriage is just going to be this way or I'm just going to stay stuck in this. This ain't the place if you want to stay stuck. The place is called Forward City. That's all I got. We move forward here. We step above the thing that we might have fell into. It's okay to be knocked down. But now, today, it's an appointed time to move forward. It's, you're not too old, you're, you're not too nasty, not too ratchet, you're not caught up in enough. There is nothing new to him under the sun. And from this side of the wall to this side of the wall, every woman is included. Every woman watching online, God is speaking to them. Tonight, y'all can clap, it's for him. It's for him. It's for him. Man. God started sharing with me um, that he wanted us to become modern day Marys. That sometimes we allow uh, the text of the Bible to stay the text of the Bible. And we never see these words come off the, off the page to come alive in our life. And I just started thinking. And he started saying, testimony, testimony, Jackie. Share what I did in your life. And maybe you gather some other ladies and start sharing what's happened in their life. Because many ladies that will be in the room tonight, they are looking more at the thing that they feel is limiting them than they're looking at me. And it's the only reason that they're not properly believing. Tonight, we're going to look at Luke, and they should be able to put it on the screen. If you got your Bible or you got um, some form of technology, we're going to be looking at Luke 1. Um, and we're going to walk through the Bible slow. It's not a, we're not in a rush. I pray that you got a babysitter and you really got time, because I got time. I'm telling you, I have time, because what I am is I'm sick of seeing daughters of the Most High God settle and not become everything that they were called to be. I'm sick of me not becoming and be everything he called me to be. Too many times God came knocking at my door and I was giving him every reason, Naja, he couldn't do what he was saying he wanted to. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We draw a line in the sand and tonight God is going to get out of us what he desires to get out of us. Anybody on the same page with me? Y'all ready to walk the word? What I know is, is we're looking at a great example and we're going to just read through the word. We're going to look at um, Luke 1. We'll be starting at verse 26. And as, you, as you'll notice, it says the birth of Jesus foretold. We're going to be talking about a woman that was challenged, that was birthed, even before the foundation of earth, to carry the greatest thing that could ever be carried. To do it with boldness, to do it with authority, to not be ashamed, to not be afraid, to not be so concerned with reputation that she could carry what the father had birthed her to carry. Do you recognize that he's not on the back end deciding what he created you for? There's a thing that you've been placed in the earth to do that only you can, Tanya. No one else can take your place. No one else. I, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people say, well, he's called me to this place and it's too saturated. If you're not there, he's called you there. It ain't saturated enough. If you haven't showed up to do the thing he's called you to do, it isn't complete. And this is where we find Mary. Other women had birthed things, but no one had birthed the Savior of the world. Can you imagine this young girl in Nazareth, 14-year-old girl, 
being uh, come upon by the angel Gabriel and being told that she is now about to give birth to the Savior of the world. Could you imagine the fear? Could you imagine the disbelief? And we shy back from even just being able to go to the girl beside us and say what God says. Let's get into the text. Let's get into the text. Luke 1, Luke 1 and 26. This is what the Bible says. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent angel, sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. Who sent him? God. Who? God. Who sends the word that's necessary for you to hear? God. Do you have to create your own word to live? He said God sent the word. There's a particular thing that God wants to say to you tonight, and all you had to do was respond by being in the right place. But the thing that he wants to say to you, the thing that he wants to birth through you and in you, you don't have to create it yourself. You don't have to, uh, and, and I'm not saying that he might not cause you to fast, but you know how sometimes we feel like we got to work so hard or we got to fight so much for the work we're supposed to live. There is purpose assigned to your life, and God will send the word for you. All you got to be do, all you have to do is be willing to hear the word. He says that God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. He sent him to where she was. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta put yourself out there. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to somebody. You ain't gotta show yourself. You ain't gotta be no certain way. Wherever the word of God needs to be for you, he'll have you in that place. He sent the word to Nazareth, to where Mary was. Can I tell you the word will find you? Your word, your word, may it be the next house, the next man, the next career. Your word will find you right where you are. I want to hear somebody say, I'll be still and know that he alone is God. I'm just saying the word will find you. That's all I'm saying. He sent the word to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant to King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favorite woman, favorite woman. He didn't say greetings, uh, adulterous woman. He didn't say greetings, woman that had had the abortion. He didn't say greetings, woman that had bankruptcy. He wasn't recalling any of her limitations. He greeted her the way that the Lord saw her. Can I just say that God brings greetings to you today as you are fearfully and wonderfully made. As you are the salt and the light of the earth. You are the head and not the tail. Greetings, favorite woman, because that's who you are. And if you can start seeing yourself that way, you would live different. You wouldn't be begging for that, that boy that dropped in your DMs. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. We don't act like orphans when we know we're queens. We are children of the Most High God. I'm talking to somebody in here. And we have authority in our marriages. We have authority on our job. I'm just saying he called you favor. That's what he said. And he's your creator. You don't even have a say greater than him because you didn't create you. Maybe we should even bring our thoughts under the subjection of a king. Under the subjection of our savior, of our master. Y'all, I'm going to try to get through this text. Yeah, I see. He said, greetings, favorite woman. I pray that you would hear what God is saying. He said, the Lord is with you. Sometimes you feel alone, but I just declare he's with you. And because he's with you, you don't have any reason to be afraid. He says, the Lord is with you. Verse 29 says, confused and disturbed, <laughs> Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. He says, don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. I want somebody to just say this out loud. Daddy, thank you for favor. If you're watching online, just say, Daddy, thank you for favor. I'll tell you this, favor ain't fair, but it's real. It might not make sense why you made it through it and they didn't make it through it. Favor ain't fair, but I'll tell you it's real. He done kept me through some stuff that other people didn't make it through. Million didn't make it, but I'm still here. Somebody should just take a moment. Somebody should just take a moment and praise God for favor. Favor ain't fair, but it's real. He gave you the job and you know you ain't qualified. It ain't fair, but it's real. He kept that child. It ain't fair, but it's real. He kept that marriage. You wanted to give up. It ain't fair, but it's real. The doctors counted you out. It ain't fair, but it's real. Woo. God, we thank you for favor. 
We thank you for favor, God. We thank you for favor, God. We thank you for favor. I can't praise him for what he did for you. You might want to praise him for yourself. Yada basi. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We at verse 31, ladies. We at verse 31. It ain't fair, but it's real. Verse 31 says, you will conceive and give birth to a son. This is where we're pausing for a moment because I got an issue. Ladies, I got an issue with you and me. We receive the word in January. We receive it. We can see. God, I'm going to do thus saith the Lord. He called me to the nations. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to turn the world upside down like the people in Acts. We receive it and we can see. We receive the promise. The word of God in verse 31 says, we will conceive and give birth. Have you given birth to the word that he said in January 1? All I'm asking is have you just conceived the word and haven't given birth? That's why I titled the message, It's Time to Push. You got to push beyond just conceiving the word. It's been too many, too many women walking around here waddling, overdue, and it's time to push now because we won't just conceive, we will give birth. Let's hear what he says that she'll conceive and give birth to. He says she'll give birth to a son and you'll name him Jesus. He'll tell you what you're supposed to give birth to. You don't have to create it. I want to get us out of this idea that we got uh, enough wisdom and ingenuity on our own to set our own plan. We do not know enough. Sometimes, let me just stop here. If he had done what you prayed for, if he had done what you thought you wanted to do, where would you be right now? Can somebody just say, thank you, God, for knowing better than me? My God, I'll tell you, I'm grateful he's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning and the end. He's first and last. He knows all. He sees all. He is omni-everything. Omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent. Oh, man, I'm telling you, if you want somebody to give you the word of God, he says you'll conceive it and give birth to it, and he'll tell you what to name it. You can go back to him. You don't just have to hear him to hear the promise. Then you can go back, Daddy, what you call this thing? My God. He says, and you'll name him Jesus. Y'all, I'm feeling this thing, and I'm going to preach it like I feel it. I am feeling this thing. I'm sick of being boxed in. I'm sick of not flowing in the oil that I was given. Like, I'm, I'm conceiving and giving birth right now. See, you got to preach what you teach. You got you to gotta live what you teach. That's what I wanted to say. That's the best message. I'm out here on this water. He bid me to come, and I'm standing on the word of God. I am what he says I am, and I can do what he says I can do. Woo! I'm giving birth right now. I'm pushing beyond the lie that I got to have it all laid out. God can meet me on the water, and he can meet you too. Yada baye. Hallelujah. I'm breaking boxes today. I'm like the woman with the alabaster box. I'm breaking my box today. He says, we'll name him Jesus. Verse 32 says, he will be very great. Y'all, we don't birth just ordinary stuff. He says, he will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Somebody say, fruit that'll last. We ain't just trying to burst something that's going to die next year. I'm talking about some stuff that's going to abide and remain and stay connected to God. He says from generation to generation, this kingdom will be established and last. Woo. So we received the whole prophecy of what Mary would do. Mary got questions. Y'all got questions? You know, sometimes Jesus starts talking good and you're like, God, that sounds real good. But Jesus, I got a few questions. Anybody got a few questions in the room? Like, Pastor Jackie, she's talking good and I'm feeling everything she's saying. But Daddy, I got a few questions. I don't know how you're going to do this, God. I got some limitations. I got some things I've been through, some stuff that the doctor said, some things my husband ain't did yet, some ways I want him to see he's not seeing. This is what Mary says in verse 34. She says, Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. We all have these things that we see and we say, how can this happen? God, I don't know if they messed some stuff up, some stuff up when I had that abortion. How can this happen? I don't know if they, um, 
They counted me out because I came from this place. I don't know if I can actually overcome this addiction because I've been masturbating every night. I've been looking at that thing every day. I don't know if I can overcome that situation. They say I have an incompetent service or I got fibroids or, you know, all these conditions they name over us or, or where we've been and what we've come through. God, how can I birth a child? I've never known a man. I'm a virgin. Anybody know about limitations? I got anybody that's looked at some mountains in your life and said, Daddy, I don't know. I heard what you said, but I don't know how you'll do it. I'm not doubting that you can. I'm just saying how you going to do it. Do I got any real women in the room? Daddy, I heard you clearly. I just don't really understand how you're going to do it. Can I tell you what the angel said back? He speaks back to you when you ask questions. You got to go to the right person to get the right answer. Don't go to your friend who don't have what you want to have. Don't go to your friend that, that keep talking about it but won't live it, okay? All I'm saying, Elder D, all I'm saying is go to the right source. If you want the right answer, you got to go to the right source. Verse 35 says, the angel of the Lord replied, he will speak back to you. Can I just defeat this reality that God doesn't speak? I'm telling you, he says in his word that his sheep know his voice. I'm telling you, he says that when we draw not to him, he draws not back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hears us. He says he inclines his ears to the righteous. And I'll tell you this, you're not righteous because you do anything right. You're righteous because it was imputed to you. You're righteous because of what he did. Woo! It's because of him. It's because of him and what he did on Calvary. He led captivity captive just for you. Just for you. Just for you, daughter, just for you. Just for you watching online. He did it for me. He did it for you. Woo. He will speak back to you. He's not afraid of your question. I'll tell you this, don't doubt him, doubt your doubts. Write that down. You wanna doubt something, doubt your doubts. Daddy, I don't know how you will do it, but I'll come to you to tell me because I believe that you hear me. I believe that if I draw not of you, you'll draw not back. I believe that you'll speak to me, that you will lead and guide me into all truth. That's what his word says, that if we lead not to our own understanding, that if we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he'll direct our path. That's what his word says. Is anybody not just reading the Bible, but reading the Bible? Y'all know I said you gotta read it and believe it. That's the word. The angel spoke back to her in verse 35. He says this, and this is what's happening even in this moment as I speak to you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. It says, where there's limitation, wherever you have declared that there is a gate that's blocking you from moving forward and giving birth. He says, the Holy Spirit, not Jackie, not Vera, she can't do it in her own strength. He says, the Holy Spirit, the part, the other part of the Trinity that we leave out, the one that we don't want to talk about. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That's what the Word of God says. Can I tell you what it means to be overshadowed? I want to pause in this moment. Have you ever seen a, a, a tall thing cast a shadow? If you want to, because see, I, I like, you know, it sounds good like, oh man, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. What does that mean practically? It means that you have to bring your limitation close enough to the Father that His being will cover it. You ever st stood, you know, when the sun is beaming and a tree is taller than you? Over, I looked up the word overshadow. It means to tower above, to cast a shadow over. It also said to be so prominent and to be most important. Like you got to let God and the Holy Spirit rise above to tower over the abortion, to tower over the lack in your life, to tower over the, per the perception that you have of yourself, to tower over your insecurity, to tower over your sexual past, to tower over the fact that you have had some issues with infertility. He's got to overshadow this stuff. He says the most high will overshadow this stuff. We got to come close enough to him. He says that he'll hide us under his wings. That we will find refuge under his shadow, the shadow of his wings. 
He says that the righteous run into him and they are safe. Tonight, he wants to overshadow some areas in our life. Another way that you are able to overshadow is to magnify him. To magnify the name of the Lord, the name that's above every name. To be in, begin to speak well of, to magnify all of it, all it means is almost to put your focus on, to begin to look at, to magnify, to look at, to make strong. It's almost like we were doing in worship. We began to praise God. And speak, like you weren't thinking about your bills and your limitations and what went wrong and what happened to you. You began to magnify the all-sufficient one. Don't tell me what my God can't do is a way that he overshadows you. He says that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. This is what the Lord says that he wants to do for us tonight. No, we might not be birthed in the king of the world, but we're birthing something that the Lord desires to exist in the earth or he wouldn't have made you be born. We are all birthed on purpose for purpose. And there's something that he wants us to push through to give birth through tonight. This is what he says in verse 36. He said, what's more? Because he doesn't make us do it alone. This was the other part of the text that was so beautiful to me. He doesn't make us do it alone. Even as I'm boasting about the Lord, you're going to hear these ladies share testimony. He says in verse 36, what's more? Your relative Elizabeth has, has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say, oh, I love this. People used to say she was barren. Have you ever seen somebody judge you by where you are? Like they found you in the winter and it wasn't leaves on your tree, so they thought you were barren. But the reality is they didn't, they didn't watch every one of your chapters. They gave up in winter, but they didn't know spring, summer, and fall was still coming. I'm telling you, they used to call her barren. <laughs> they just didn't give God enough time to overshadow her. That's all. They didn't give her enough time to get close enough to the Lord and abide with him in a way that he can overshadow her limitations. He said to Paul, when he had that thorn in his eyes, that my grace will be sufficient for you. All he was saying in that moment is I'll overshadow what you got going on. That thing that you think is a limitation, I'm greater than that. That's what he was saying. That's what he was saying. He says that uh, your, your cousin, your cousin, she had got pregnant, uh-huh. And uh, people used to call her barren, amen. But she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. That's what the word of God said. That like she wasn't just conceiving this thing. She started nurturing it. It started growing. She started letting the Holy Spirit overshadow the fact that she had the limitation of old age. And she just said, God, I give you this old age. Can you overshadow this too? Can you handle this too? She was carrying. She was already in her sixth month. So Mary and Elizabeth had a partner to do that thing with. Tonight, we're going to get some partners. If you're watching, I pray that you stay for the after party because we're going to partner with some ladies and we're going to burst some stuff in the spirit. We're going to get a Mary and Elizabeth type anointing tonight and we're going to push some things forward tonight. Amen. If you hadn't joined Permission World, that's where the after party happened. They got a link for you. Don't miss it. You need to jump in and we're going to be praying with authority and might. Amen. Okay, we're going to finish this up. So... She was pregnant. She was in her sixth month. And then verse 37 says, for the word of God will never fail. I just wanted somebody to hear that part. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. I don't care how long the promise tarries. Wait on it. If he said it, it will not return void. If he said, I don't care if you've been waiting 20 years. I don't care if it was 12. Like the woman with the issue of blood. If he said it, his word won't fail. His word won't fail. Mary responded, and I pray this is all of our response tonight. I am the Lord's servant. May everything, see some of us have been settling for some other things. May everything you have said about me, not about, not about Keisha, because we good to believe for everybody else. I'm speaking to somebody's spirit, man. You got to get faith to believe for you too. He said, she says, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. I want to leave verse 45 with you. This is what the Lord says in response to our decision to let the Holy Spirit overshadow us. You are blessed because you believe the Lord would do what he said. I could close the book right there. You are blessed because you believe what the Lord said. 
All we are up here is women that through our trials and through our limitations, just like Mary, through our fear, through our confusion, through our disturbance, we said, God, I will still believe you can. You've been too good not to believe. Every other time I put my trust in you, you never fail me and you won't start now. What I want to do in this moment is I don't want you to just have to believe my word about this. I want you to hear from some other modern day Marys because this word right here is alive, is living in every one of them. They have taken God at his word. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to bring representation for some of the limitations that I know many of you all have been using as your excuse for why you couldn't push. And I wanted them to say, you can't tell me what my God can't do. You can't tell me what my God can't do. If you find your testimony in the life of this lady, I want you to be, I want you to be so loud and so indignant. Like, that, like I will become even more undignified than this. When your story show up, I need you to tell the devil. She was speaking for me. She was speaking for me. So we'll start over here with Tamika. I'm going to let Tamika share her own story. She's a modern day Mary that has stood through some things and allowed the Holy Spirit to overshadow her just like he's going to do for you, Naja. You've been standing and believing for some stuff and God sees your faithfulness. Let me tell you, there's not one tear you cry he doesn't bottle. Oh my yeah. Oh my yeah. Weeping may endure for a night, but I declare joy, 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 joy. You can rename yourself joy. Joy comes in the morning. It'll water your harvest. Keep that ground open. Keep sowing those tears of faithfulness. Ooh, I die by you. Tamika, go ahead and just start talking about how the Lord overshadowed you and what your modern day Mary story is. Amen. <laughs> so, um, where to start? Okay, so I was. Uh, be sure that mic is on. I don't hear your echo, so we just got to be sure that the people online can hear you. It's on. Amen. Amen. I, oh, okay. I wasn't close enough. There we are. There that, we are. That part, I wasn't close enough for his shadow, too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, I recently, if y'all know, most of y'all know, gave birth to. Uh, my son, Malachi, Marcellus, James McCray. <laughs> See, some of y'all don't Woo! understand. I'm going to just help My you real quick. God. I'm not going to tell a story, but you should stand and worship God because only he could do what was done. That's all I'm saying. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. He's going to do it for you too. Woo! We mourn with those that mourn, but we also rejoice with them that rejoice. Woo! Don't tell me what my God can't do. I'm going to try, y'all. I'm trying. But I stood through that testimony. Amen. That part, Amen. That part. Woo! She's so right when she says you got to know who to go to when you start sharing your dreams and your visions and what God has told you. You can't tell that to a non-believer. You can't tell that to somebody who act like they don't have a revelation or a memory of what something, of something God has done for them or a family member. You got to have a memory. You got to be able to recall. Anyway, all that to say that um, I wanted to have a child when I first got married in 2012. Um, so me and Cassius, we tried, we tried, we tried. And I got pregnant um, in 2014, but I miscarried at 12 weeks. Um, and at the time, I used to work out a lot. Like, I was so concerned with my um, outer exterior. Oh, my God. Whew, how I looked. And um, I, I, I thought that how I looked determined how I felt. Um, and all of the, I, I, my perspective was, like, totally um, out of sync with what God was saying at the time. And I, I didn't know it because I, I was born and raised in church, but my spiritual covering wasn't quite there the way I needed it to be fully for me to believe what God was actually saying. Um, so I miscarried at 12 weeks, and I thought it was something I did because of my workouts. Because um, I literally was in the middle of a squat uh, in, a, in Grovetown visiting my sister, and I felt something, but uh, the, the doctor told me it was nothing that I did, but I couldn't make myself believe that because of how extensive my workouts were. So um, I continued to work out. Um, I continue to talk to family members, continue to talk to nurses and doctors to, you know, see what I can do because it took from 2014 
two last year. At the time, people would tell you, you're young, you need to start a family now. Most people want to get married and after a year or two start a family. I, I had that as one of my goals because society told me. But God knew I wasn't ready. Not that I was infertile, because I want to be very sensitive to the people who, who have issues conceiving. I looked up the word infertility, and it was um, the inability to conceive. And God literally checked me in a moment and was like, I've given you the ability to conceive the first time. So why are you doubting my ability to do something to you? So I started searching for what could potentially be my issue. And God only spoke this to me a, a few years ago. He said that you had a blockage. So I looked up what the word blockage was, and it was literally, um, I think it's an obstruction um, that present, that uh, in, in a, what's the word, PJ? An obstruction that keeps movement or flow from taking place. Wow. And that was the problem, my, my spiritual blockage. I was spiritually blocked. I wasn't believing what God said about me. I wasn't believing who he said. I wasn't believing I was who he said I was. I wasn't believing him for my marriage. My marriage was struggling at the time. Y'all know, a lot of y'all know my marriage <laughs> testimony. Had it not been for Four City Church, had it not been for PJ, PT, Mama Sent, and these women right here on this, on this platform, had it not been for the right people with the, in the right community saying the right things over you, the right things that God says, Malachi wouldn't be here. Malachi would not be here. He is 10 months, almost, about to be 11 months right now. The doctors told me I had a T-shaped uterus and that if I was to conceive, I probably wouldn't um, last the whole nine months. My, on, my pregnancy wouldn't go to full term. Um, I would probably have to have a C-section, but the devil lied because I was able to conceive. I was able to carry the full term. I dilated to 10 centimeters, but me, I got in the way. What month is it? September. Me and my husband just celebrated nine years of marriage. Oh my God! <laughs> after almost, <laughs> I won't even rush past that because we were almost done after year one or two because <laughs> whew, we got whole nother story. This is probably somebody else's testimony, but it would it took so much of a perspective shift yeah. and me deciding to say the right things for me to start believing that what he told me could actually happen for me. Mm. It was nothing I was doing wrong in my body. Mm. That's really good. My body was what the Lord said my body was. I had to change my language. Yeah. Literally had to change my language and start declaring, what the, declaring the word of the Lord over my mind, over my heart, my body, my marriage. I started walking in my house. I, people who've been to my house before know that there was a room I would not put furniture in. It, I Woo! declared it Malachi's nursery in the beginning. My husband put a printer, an office printer in there. I said, take it out. This is not an office. Woo! Take it out. Woo! I don't know what you think this Woo! is. <laughs> this room, I already declared this room is Malachi's nursery. Matter of fact, put the, the, uh, the streamer that you got with Malachi's name on it, it still sits above his door. This room is Malachi's room, period. So all that to say, um, whoever is out there struggling with infertility, it's, it's really... A perspective issue. Everything more than likely in life is a perspective issue. Change your language, change your narrative, speak and declare the word of the Lord over your situation, and watch change happen. Watch change happen. Words create worlds. Words create worlds. That's a word. When they, was, when they were ministering the, the song, um, I'm a miracle, mm -hmm. literally. I birthed a miracle, and I couldn't do that if I wasn't a miracle first. Period. 
So if anybody comes to me telling me, and I'm 30, I just turned 40. That's the part I, I wanted. Just That's right 40. there. That right there is what I wanted. <laughs> Call the devil a liar and tell him that your biological clock is not what God, what it's what God says. Amen. We have to refute these lies we've been accepting from the world in Jesus' name. In if Jesus that was name. your testimony, I just want your hand. Like, just let me Man. know who's in the room. Man. If you're watching online and she's speaking your story, let me just know by show of hands. You can type it, it was my story. We're gonna let uh, Crystal Nesbitt go ahead and share. Woo, I saw somebody's faith rise. No, 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 let's just pause right there. I saw somebody's faith rise to believe it was still possible. God, I see you working. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, we believe you're working in the wombs of your daughters right now in Jesus' name. Woo. Hallelujah. I know. Okay. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Nesbitt. Amen. Hi, ladies. All right. When I first came to Ford City, I was uh, separated from my husband. At the time of seven years, I left him with my two young children. Um, basically just gave up on hope. Like I just lost my faith. I just had no more hope and faith for my marriage. Um, and there was no infidelity, even though I've seen marriages succeed after infidelity, amen. There was, that just wasn't my story. It was just like a lack of communication and a lot of just stupidity, to be honest. Um, if I could just name it stupidity. Tell the truth, shame the devil. <laughs> And Mama Sin is who told me it was stupid, by the way. <laughs> but um, I'll, get into, <laughs> I'll get into that a little bit later. But, um, but yeah, and so just lost a lot of hope. Um, I remember going to PJ and telling her, this is it. I said, I'm done. I'll never forget that. Day. I'll never forget it either. Because your face said everything. She was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And y'all know how PJ do. And then um, she encouraged me to talk to Mom Sent. And I sat down with Mom Sent, and she listened to my story, and just me just complaining. Like, she's like, I don't hear it. I don't hear anything. I don't hear you having out for anything. Like, a lot of it just sounds stupid. Go get your, like, go get your husband, girl. But, I mean, it's like what we were saying. Don't go through things alone, you know? And the Bible even says in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Because I literally thought I was right. You know, it's over. You know, I got two little kids. They were very young at the time. And so speaking, oh, Mama sent, you don't even know this, that when you were talking to me, my husband texted me that same time you were talking. He was like, I think we should fight. I don't think it should be over. And I'm sitting here reading his text and listening to Mama Sin. And I'm like, okay, just drop a brick already. Like, you're, like, I get it. Okay. So just went home and, and really just, um, prayed to God and just regained faith for my marriage. I called my husband. I was like, I read your text, and I talked to some women at my church, and I was like, I'm going to give it another, another shot. And so, um, and that's a miracle in itself, because I really was done, you know. Um, and so when we got together, I'm not even going to say that things were like peaches and cream, you know, it still took, you know, a lot of work and a lot of prayer. But I will say, things didn't change, and we're now, we just celebrated 11 years back in March. But I can truly say that things did not change until I changed. Um, God basically had to tell me to get out of his seat. Come on here! <laughs> get out of my way. A lot of times, I was trying to change my husband using my mouth, you know? And it just took a lot of um, just stepping back, getting out of God's way and allowing him to do it. And the minute I did that, like a supernatural shift just took place in my marriage and my husband. And, um, and that's, that's, and I, like I said, we're celebrated 11 years. I will say today, Today, our marriage is in the best place it has ever been in 11 years. In 11 years. Best friends, laughing, talking, like, I'm just, I'm just so grateful to God. I'm so grateful for our woman of God, our man of God. I'm so grateful for mom sent. 
I'm just so grateful because I'm looking at my family today and we are whole. And it just feels really good to know that like, my kids are raised in a, you know, a two-parent home and, and the fact that I, one decision could have changed everything, you know? And I just wanted to, to, share, to share my story. And um, yeah, God is good. And we give God glory for being good. I still believe he's moving. I know this is so many women testimony in this room. Maybe you're right where she was. Maybe you're right at the verge of, of throwing in the towel and you decided there's no way that this marriage can make it. She said one decision could have changed everything. One decision would have changed the trajectory of her two children's life. Not a day, their life. I pray that when we give our yes in marriage, that we give it uh, in a way that it is an unconditional, uh, ever-going, uh, continual yes. It's predetermined. If I have to fight to give the yes, I'll give it again. If I have to cry to give the yes and bring his name glory through this marriage, I'll do it again. Whatever it takes for this yes to remain, God, I'll do it for your glory. You see it. You can't tell me what my God can't do. You see it. 11 years strong. My God. Mama sent. Amen. Lord have mercy. Absolutely. It's I just a wanted free to place. add one more thing. Shout out to my husband real quick. But just knowing that when I stepped out of the way, I want to say that my husband is a leader, a godly leader in our home. <laughs> Listening to him pray in tongues in the shower and just seeing who he is today, like only God can do that. <laughs> only God can do that. And I just want to shout out my baby real quick. Amen. Amen. You need to speak well of him. Too many times you want them to change, but you never tell them what they do right. Anything that you feed, grow. You want the stuff that he do well to grow, feed it. We nurture so much the things that we don't want to see. We have to kill the thing that we don't want to see by not speaking of that, praying about that, but bolstering, affirming, speaking well of that which we want to live. What you feed grows. In Jesus' name, I declare that even when Dale goes to another level of leadership, just by her affirmation, I tell you, man, God is moving. He's overshadowing some stuff in this room. Go ahead, mama. Go ahead. It's just one little tidbit that I forgot to mention. Um, when it, as it pertains to me working out, I still work out on, on a regular not regular, but on a consistent basis. Let me not lie to the, to the, to the saints. Um, but I, I still work out. But the thing that I replaced that habit with was praying and fasting. I literally, like, the word says these things, these things only come by prayer and fasting. We literally pray, prayed and fasted for Malachi. We prayed and fasted for our marriage. We prayed and fa uh, fasted for everything that we're starting to see our harvest uh, right now. Like, literally... Our habits changed, the discipline to begin new habits, the right habits changed. And I, I literally, I wouldn't be here right now without the understanding of what prayer and fasting is. I, I thank you. I thank God for your yes to be able to, to train up women to understand what that is. Because I learned more about fasting in permission room. I learned more about fasting in Dig Deep. I learned more about fasting by watching them lead. So your spiritual covering matters. That's all I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Okay, so when Pastor Jackie asked me to be a part of the panel, I had no idea what part of my testimony I would share because so God good. has so many miracles. I mean, so many. I can't even count them all. Just as I listened to Crystal, I recognized that it, if it had not been for the liberation into the spirit, I would not have had the mind to testify to her. And listen, I'm an unlikely source. My reputation did not bring me to the place where I could tell Crystal without a doubt that there was nothing wrong with her marriage. It was because of the experiences that God had allowed me to go through and the shame that I had overcome because I had been divorced several times. So God can use an unlikely source. He can use an unlikely source. And I'm here to tell you that my reputation 
It was not my reputation that gave me my testimony. It was Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's why when she said that it's not our righteousness because we do what's right, it's because he died on the cross. He died on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us. And we get it twisted. We get it twisted. We think it's us and it has something to do with us and it has everything to do with him. Everything to do with him. Everything to do with him. The second thing that I wanted to say is don't tell me what my God can't do. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Don't tell me what my God can't do. I had the opportunity recently to go to the doctor with my mama, to this wound care doctor. Oh and I was God. excited about going to this doctor because I had heard all these good things about him. He had experience, da 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 Listen, I went to see a demon from hell. That's exactly what I saw. It was a demon from hell. He was a man in man form, but he came in with the message of the pit. And listen, let me tell you, the Jesus in me was not moved. It was not moved. It was not moved. My mom had been spared from sepsis, and she's 87 years old. And God snatched her life back because she was at death's door. And I had already seen that. I had seen her come through surgery and come off the ventilator. So I already knew what God was doing. He had a word in me that the wound that was formed because of the surgery to save her life would heal. It was already healed. But listen, this demon walked in and not only did he not just say, well, I think the prognosis is slim and it's dim. This demon said, it's not going to heal. Wow. He said, it is not going to He said, where the tissue coming from? Last time I checked, God creates tissue. <laughs> Last time I checked, it's God that creates tissue. Listen, and let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. What happened was after he said that, listen, I was not dissuaded. I was not moved. I was not shaken by what he said. As a matter of fact, I was astounded by he had the audacity to say that to me. I had the audacity to say that to me. I'm going to tell you something. God told me today, he said, if you step in the room, I'm in the room. Things should change. Things should change. God had me to step into this situation. I had no idea that I would be called into the situation. But as I stepped into the situation, I have taken over the power of the almighty God that's within me to speak what he says, to see what he said, to get visions of what he said. And ever since that word has been spoken, listen, let me tell you, that Tisha has doubled. It's tripled. I'm talking about, I'm telling you, like a wound that started out like that, it's like this. It's like this, right before my eyes. So listen, for anybody who's needing healing. My God. For anybody who's needing healing. Don't tell me what my God can't do. I said, don't tell me what my God can, can't do. God can do everything but fail. He can do everything but fail. If you got a marriage that looks like it's impossible, that's the very place that God will step Woo! in. And listen, matter of fact, you should be stepping in so he can step in. Don't let the enemy run you out of your house. Don't let the enemy tell you lies anymore. Don't let the enemy have you take a hold of the world's view. Listen, Jesus Christ established marriage. It's his institution and he sustains it. It's not us that sustain. It's not Crystal and Wendell sustaining that marriage. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. But what they did was they yielded to a holy God. They yielded. And, and that's my story. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Woo! All I got is we should give him a little glory right here. Sometimes you got to praise him when he's worthy to be praised. Sometimes you got to let your shout. You don't let no rock cry out for you. Maybe you believe it for your marriage, your child, your situation. I'm telling you, he says in his word, we overcome him. Him is the adversary by the blood of the lamb that he shed on Calvary. 
and by the word of our testimony. Can I tell you, we stepping over some stuff. No, no, no. We're stepping over some stuff. Somebody should just start stepping in here. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Woo! My God. God told me he was turning the heat up tonight. He told me he was going to wane in here. Jehovah Rapha reign, Jehovah Nisi reign, Elohim reign, Rapha reign, Shalom reign, Yerabaye Serabaye, reign in this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want these ladies to finish because it's worth all the time that we're giving. I, want, I don't want one woman to leave and not be represented. Go ahead, Pastor Keisha. I don't hear you. Sure. Hello. You good? Amen. Amen. Um, so I am here tonight to speak to all of my single ladies. Yes. And I'm speaking to my ladies to not settle. Come on. That the women here tonight will see the fullness of everything that the Lord has spoken to you. That he's shown you in your quiet time. That he says in his word that you will see the fullness of it. My testimony is that I spent my entire 20s single. Standing and believing that he will show up, that he will be faithful concerning his word. And my limitation was true belief. That I started out that journey trying to fix myself. Because the world says, you're single because of this or that or this and that. You need to take yourself out on more dates, which is you and Jesus. And it's because you haven't studied enough and all this other stuff. But what happened was when I did all those things and he still was not here, I said, then what, Lord? And I remember talking to Pastor Jackie and she been preaching. She's been a bad girl for a long time. Seriously, because she gave me that same word about righteousness. And she said, Keisha, you do not do what is right so that you can move the hand of God. You're not trying to manipulate him into blessing you. He's going to bless you because you are his daughter. That's it. You do what is right because it is asked of you, because you represent him as a child of God. And when I understood that, that it was nothing that I was doing wrong, there's nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You, are, you did not miss it. That there is a date on heaven's calendar that has your name on it. It has his name on it. And we're speaking today by faith that you just would believe that he is faithful to come through. And that you will see a fullness. That it would not be partial. It would not be half. You don't have to fix him. He will pursue you. You don't have to make yourself known or seen. I made the unlikely decision to move to Columbia from Charlotte and everything, all of the boxes said, girl, you're going into hiding. You don't do anything. You don't go out nowhere. You don't even go to the restaurants. All you do is go to church. But guess what? He sent them to church. He sent him right where I was. Like the word said, he sent a messenger to find her. His word will find you right where you are. Working your field, serving your Lord. Focus on the things of God, I promise you. He is faithful. I've said time and time again, he is faithful. He is faithful. I will see her husband show up in the fullness of everything that he has promised. And there is no devil in hell that will be able to tell me otherwise. He is faithful and that is it. It's just a charge. There were nights 
that it was nothing but the grace of God alone. I would be on my floor, I would watch a YouTube video to just get some type of hope. And God met me on that floor in tears. But guess what? I would never forget, and I'll tell you time and time again, it was worth it. It is worth it. Every night is worth it. Every tear is worth it. Every, and I'm not even going to call it a delay because it's not a delay. Every moment that passed by is worth it. From the moment I said yes at 21 to the time he showed up at 29, it was worth it. And it will be worth it for you. And that's it. We just gonna give him glory. No, 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 no. I need somebody to grab that word. That word right there. I'm gonna put this Bible down. Somebody need to grab that word right there. I make a declaration tonight. No other man will have my body. No other man will have my heart other than my husband. And I won't settle. He will be more than, he will be exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask, think, or imagine. I call my spiritual daughters up. In Jesus' name, you will not settle. You will get everything and more. And let me tell you this. I want the music brought down for this. When he show up, you'll know how to fast and pray. When he show up, you'll know who you are. When he show up, you will be sure about who God has called you to be. We're not waiting on a man to complete us. We come in whole and we attach to something whole so the marriage can be whole. We're not waiting on something. We already have everything we need. See, marriage is a cherry on top. It's not a necessity. Somebody need to hear me. I get real serious about that. You are sure thing because God said so. And we're not waiting on no devil in hell to tell us that. Woo. Amen, amen. We're going to let Janiah go. Hallelujah. But I just want to to say is in the lane of it was worth it there was no guessing that I had to do the pursuit that I was able to experience it bears fruit and it's bearing fruit that'll last and that's all I can say is that because of being a woman because of standing with her and being a woman of prayer and fasting and just knowing who I was in God there was no one who could talk me out of or talk me into the opposite and you don't have to have no fear when it comes you don't have to fear you know is this it or is this not he will give you full assurance and peace come on key and again it will look like everything that he's promised you in your heart Hallelujah. Can we just clap for that testimony? My God. My God. I'm telling you, man, you got to get some people around you that are going to remind you what the Lord said. And don't let you settle for even 99%. He, we, he, we're going to receive the full promise. And I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for it. I mean, so um, I want to address the issue of lust sexual sin. Um, my story starts, I've been in church my whole life. I've known God my whole life. There was never a Sunday that I wasn't there at a Bible study. I wasn't there. Um, and I had full intention of keeping myself um, till I was married. I had every, like, everybody knew that about me. Everybody knew that I was a Jesus girl and that I was a virgin and that's where I was going with my life. Um, and so I went to college. My God, college. I, right, made it. Pray made for it. your children before they go to college. Amen, amen. See, you got to get it in them before they go. Amen. 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 My God, my amen. God. And I love my mom and my girl. They sent me off well. Shaquita Joyce, I love y'all. Um, they sent me off well, but I went to an HBCU. Um, and I, and I, and I. It's some devil. <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Oh man, and I was and I was strong freshman year, sophomore year. Um, but because I was this Jesus girl, people start asking questions. And you can there is a experience you can have with the Lord your entire life where you can know of Him but not know Him. And so people started asking me these questions. Well, why are you keeping your day? Why are you? And I'm like. 
because God said so. <laughs> and it's like, but what, why did he mean that? Like, why did, and I didn't have answers. I just, I knew the facts, but I didn't know his heart enough to be able to articulate it to other people. And so when other people around you are doubting it, you don't have a foundation. I'm like, well, God, why am I a virgin? I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't like, and I wasn't in the position. I was out, you know, on my own in college. I didn't have a spiritual covering to say like, hey, baby, this is why, or this is why you should be doing that. And so... I ended up losing my virginity at 21, um, not because I was in love, not because, you know, he was this, this, and this. I, I was curious, honestly. And be even before that, when I first got to college, because of all of these, um, uh, the new environment that I was in, I started experimenting with porn and masturbation. And, you know, people would say, like, you know, I wasn't addicted to it. And I used to say that to myself, like, I'm not addicted to it because I can stop. But... If I could stop, I would have stopped. Uh oh. I was still uh -oh. going. I was still going. And it became a thing that every day, every night, it was something that I was doing for years and years and years. That was the ultimate thing that led. I'm like, well, Lord, I already feel impure. Like, I already feel like I'm not following you. I might as well just go the distance, right? So that's why I uh, ended up losing my virginity. And so that led to like a year and a half of me just like, you know what, God? I'm out here now. Like, I'm out here now. Like, I done jumped out here. Like, I'm, I might as well just let go of everything that I've been learning for these past 21 years. I might as well just let go and see where I end up, right? And even in my mess, y'all, I was deep in my mess, and he made provisions for me to get to South Carolina. In my mess. And I didn't, I didn't even plan to say that, but I was in the thick of my mess when the job opportunity presented itself for me to move here. Didn't know Forest City was here, but I, I got here and I started coming to Forest City and I started, you know, everything attached to this church moves forward. I don't care what you say. Everything, everything attached to this church. And so I started feeling the Lord pricking my heart to like get out of that stuff. And I was, I mean, still every single day porn, every single day masturbation. And my mama didn't know, nobody knew, but it was a silent struggle for me. Um, and I remember there was one night in October, uh, it's dang, almost about to be three years, but I remember it was one night in October, we went to a flow and um, Pastor Travis laid his hands on me and I was just like, at, at that point, I was just like, you know, all right, like whatever you wanna do, PT, you know, but. I went home that night and I was feeling this urge, like, oh my God, I want to fulfill this sexual desire. And so I did what the world said that I needed to do and to fulfill that desire. And I remember at the end of it, I felt the exact same way. Ooh. I still felt unfulfilled. And I'm like, God was like, I'm the only one, baby. I'm the only one that can do it for you. And I will tell you from that night in October, I have not watched a single piece of porn. I have not Woo! masturbated, and I have not given myself to another man. And I'll tell you this. No, no, we gonna clap there. We gonna clap. We gonna, only God could do that. Only God could do that. Literally. It's a miracle, a modern day miracle. And we give him glory. We give him his glory. I know it's more stories than that, than that, that will make noise tonight. But I wanted to speak to every real thing that we were facing. I wanted you to know that you weren't alone. If he could do it for her, he could do it for you. I wanted every need to be met tonight. For him to be able to overshadow anything we faced. He's able to do anything but fail. In Jesus' name. And I'll tell you this. From that night... Um, and this is, this is my story. I don't know it to be true for everybody, but people would always tell me, like, if the Lord really delivered you, the desires would go away. And my desires never went away. But I remember one time the Lord told me, like, but tonight I've given you the ability to choose. And so every time, and, it, and it's, not without, it's not without community. It's not without prayer, and it's not without coming to this church every single day. But the Lord told me, like, if you continue to choose me, I'll continue to choose you back. And so that's my story, and I'm just grateful. I'm so, so, and I live with so much freedom. There is not an unfulfilled place in my life. There is no part of me that I'm missing. I'm full. I live in joy. I live in peace. I have fun, and I enjoy the life that the Lord has given me. And so that's my story. Come on. Don't tell me what my God can't do. Woo. Woo. My God. My God, we're going to let Tori wrap this up. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So my story starts, uh, actually, I'm covering two 
of the ladies up here. So for you ladies that are like, I got double for my trouble right now. Um, I want to talk to my single ladies who are over 30 or feel like you shouldn't be single. I know at 27, I felt like, oh my God, life is over. Why <laughs> am I not married yet? I'm looking at all my friends getting married. Come on. I'm looking at the Instagram models getting married. And I'm like, but God, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? And so I, um, unlike Pastor Keisha, who did the good thing and stayed single in her 20s, I was a serial dater in my 20s. On, I serial went dater. from man to man to man, searching for what looked good on paper for a husband. And so, yes, they had nice jobs. There was, there's nothing wrong with any of the men I dated in my 20s. I still talk to them now. They are great men. They are husbands. They just wasn't my husband. And so I just Just pause God. right there, man. <laughs> Come on, man. That, make that part right there. Yes. They don't have to be bad. The enemy of great is good. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. The enemy of great is good. You have to divorce good to get great. Yes. That's all I got. I'm out. I'm out. Yes. Um, and so I realized that the enemy was really just trying to get me to settle for what was good. And in my heart, I knew that while these were all good men, they were not, again, my husband. And I knew it. So I got to a point where I kept having these conversations with God. And what does he tell you? Lay it at his feet. Lay it at his feet. But I kept laying it at his feet, but picking it right back up. Uh-oh. We're guilty of it. And so at 30, I said, you know what, every, every year, two times a year, my birthday's in June, and then of course, you know, you have uh, the new year, so December. <laughs> every year, June and December, I'm making changes. I'm looking at my life like, what is not going the way it's supposed to be going? And so leading up to my 30th birthday, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm, a, I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna put this at your feet. I'm gonna lay it at your feet. And as a matter of fact, while I lay here, because I know I'm not gonna have anything else to do, I'm gonna lay myself at your feet. Man. And so at 30, I found myself looking for God. Mm. I had been in church all my life, realized I had the religion down pat, my God. but didn't have a relationship with God. And so I spent the next three years literally building a relationship with God. Mm. And I wish I could tell you that those days were good, but for the first year, I cried every day. Man. And why? Because I couldn't, I, everything that I thought I knew was a lie. Mm. Everything that I thought I knew about God was a lie. And so I had to spend three years of him pruning me, mm. changing my heart. And when I tell you, I won't lie to you, it hurt. I cried every day. I don't deny that part of my story. But as I continued to grow and I became so pregnant, full of the things that God had promised me, Man. he told me I would be the head and not the tail. He told me I would be a lender and not the Come borrower. On. And in those three years, he kept telling me, it's time to go. It's time to leave your job. Mm. And I'm like, Lord, but who gonna take care of me? Who gonna feed me? But then he started telling me, well, if the birds don't have to worry about how they gonna eat, why should you? Ma'am, ma'am. If the flowers don't have to worry about how they're gonna eat, why should you? Mm. Surely man. I love you more than I love the birds. You and better flowers, speak the right? word. And so I got to a point, I wasn't, I wasn't yet at Fort City. This was uh, going seven years ago. Three years into the journey, I was so pregnant and so miserable, but I was still at the same church that I grew up in. And something said, you got to change. Man. And funny enough, one of the guys that I broke up with, my, my ex-boyfriend, said, you know what? I went to this church. It wasn't my cup of tea, because he was real churchy. You know, <laughs> you don't have to do all of that kind of thing. It wasn't my cup of tea, but I think you'll like it. You should go to Fort City. Mm. He says, I heard on Sunday that they have prayer service, and I know you like prayer service, and it's every Tuesday and Thursday mm. at 6 a.m. So I'm like, cool. <laughs> I'll go. I go to 6 and 2, and I spot this lady by the name of Dr. Jackie Green. <laughs> And she was lit up, as dark as that room was, she was lit up like a spotlight. And I was like, 
that's where I want to be, mm. right there. Mm. And so at the age of 33 in my Jesus year, Come I on. spent the next two years, this story keeps going, two years like the woman with the issue of blood run into every service. Every time Fort City doors open, I was there. Mm. Whether it was six and two, whether it was the flow, whether it was the one o'clock service, no Pastor Travis, I don't smoke weed, but I, was, I had other commitments that I had to go to the one o'clock service. And so I found myself literally just getting in the atmosphere of where I knew I could find God. And then at 35, pregnant and miserable, I then met my husband. So I was not looking for him. I was just minding my business. And all of a sudden, this man shows up in my life. But I was like, oh, nope, this is a trick. Mm -mm. God did not tell me this. He would have forewarned me had he, had he told me he was going to send me somebody, right? He would have forewarned me. So I spent the next six months literally ignoring my husband. He would send messages. I wouldn't respond. I wouldn't respond. I was like, Lord, if this is the man that I need, because he's persistent, you're going to have to send me a, a sign. You're going to have to do something. Talk to me about this. I was waiting for thunder. I don't know what I was waiting for. <laughs> but lo and behold, he stopped messaging me. And then when I finally decided, I heard the Lord say, it's time for you to start dating again. So I was like, okay. It happened to be the, the week of Valentine's Day. And I have five dates lined up. Because, I mean, it's not like yes. guys were pursuing. I was just going home. Oh, no, I got, you want to do something? No, I got to wash my hair tonight. It takes forever. <laughs> I had every excuse why I couldn't go out. And so I went to lunch with five guys. And after I was sick and so sad because God had changed my heart and I was seeing people in a different light. And what I thought I wanted now made me sad because I was recognizing that these people were hurt and didn't know God. That's so good. And so I said to myself, I said, okay, God, are you giving me a project <laughs> or are you giving me somebody who is equally yoked? Because, you know, that's what I'm looking for, right? That's, that's what you promised me, somebody who was equally yoked. And in that moment, my husband, who I had ignored, messaged me. And that was the beginning of me recognizing that equally yoked wasn't just about both of us being Christian, but it was about somebody who could literally be your priest and hold you down in prayer and cover you. It was about a person that could prophesy to you when you don't have enough faith to believe what God is doing, that he will be it. Lo and behold, the coincidence that we're talking about the modern day Mary, my husband's name is Gabriel. And he literally comes with the good news. Yes. Gabriel. That is his name. Oh. So. I didn't know that, y'all. Yes. I ain't know. Yes. So I'm here to tell you, ladies, do not settle. If you feel in your heart that it's not right and that's not what God has for you, let it go. Lay it at his feet. And if it is for you, it will be for you. That's, that's what I have to say. But on top of that, so I met my husband at 35. At 36, I, we got married. So within a year, we were married. And then within two months of us being married, I am, I'm going to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five months from this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all. Yeah. Y'all, yes. Woo! I couldn't have made this up. Listen, that like the way he set this up, I didn't put Tori at the end. He told me he was turning the heat up tonight. He told me tonight would be so rich and it would be on fire. Y'all, Jesus has set in here. We gonna get, we gonna conceive and give birth. That right there was just too much for me. If you don't know that he made visitation here tonight, that he came to say some stuff to everybody. Did anybody get a word tonight? Did everybody receive what you needed? I believe there's some ladies watching online that even there, you felt the, the weight of glory that we've experienced tonight. And 
I want, I know we're getting close. It's almost nine o'clock. I want to make sure that we close this in a way um, that I give you the opportunity to respond to the greatest invitation there is. My mother and I were talking about this about two days ago. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that I could give you, a lot of things I can invite you to be a part of. There is not one gift greater than the gift of salvation. If I got any witnesses in the room, I would love for you to make some noise. I found myself as a girl who had known the Lord. I had known a mother that knew the Lord, knew a father that knew the Lord, grandmama. But I had to learn the Lord for myself. And it was in college where I found him. The thing that was that was different about God, and I want to share this with you all or any woman that's in this room that might be in need of this thing that I was in need of. I had searched everywhere. I had searched in academia. I had searched in making myself beautified. I had searched in, you know, having status. And I had searched in all of these other places. At the end of the day, and the random thing was, I was in my room the night this, this happened. I didn't have any sheets on my bed. I was washing stuff. It was a bare mattress, and I was in my room. I was dating this guy. He had cheated. Oh, God. Yes. He had cheated on me. And I was all alone, crying tears, willing to settle because I was afraid that if I didn't go for that, he was a good guy, greater than I had ever been with. Then who would I end up with? And in that place, after being cheated on, after finding that, having summa cum laude in a 396 meant nothing, you know, finding that, you know, what I look like and all of this stuff, at the end of the day, if somebody was hurting, what I drove and how I look was going to do nothing for them or me. I was in a place where I was just crying out to the Lord and I was like, God, I want to stop uh, bending my morals and my values. I want to stop punking out on you. I want to stop giving of myself the best of me to everybody else, but not you. And in that place, he said to me, Jackie, I'm the God that stays right there. I want somebody to hear that deep. Through all of your trials, your tribulations, your valleys, everything you could ever face. He's the only one that has a love that stays right there. He has performed miracle after miracle after miracle in my life. But the greatest miracle I've ever received was the miracle of him taking my life and giving me new life. Many of you are watching online tonight and you've you found yourself represented in all these seats and all these stories but you still have not given him rulership to have command and lordship over your life we're gonna take a pause to sing this song and as we're worshiping and, and just praising God for all the things he's done my prayer is that one of the things we'll be able to praise him for is the, the decision you make to give your life to him maybe you're in this room or you're watching online and you've never given your life to the God that is worthy of holding your whole world in his hands. Maybe you gave it, but you took it back and you need to give it again. You need to come back home. You need to give your life back to a savior that can handle your life. If you're watching online or you're in this room, it's simple. I'm going to count to three. You can type in the chat, I want to be saved. You can shoot up an emoji. There's a number that they're going to place on the screen. Same for in this room. You can raise your hand. And all we're going to do is simply agree with you and let you know you made the greatest decision. We're going to count to three. And I want you to raise your hand in signifying that you're making the greatest choice ever. And not ashamed because I tell you, there's not going to be a greater decision you'll ever make. In your whole life, in your whole world, you can receive everything. I mean, you can have all the money in the world. There's nothing that will fulfill your life the way Jesus would. So at this moment, we'll count to three. And if you want to be saved or rededicate your life, I want to see your hands. One, two, three. If there's anybody, hallelujah. If there's anybody in this room or watching online. God, we give your name glory. We say, well, look what you've done, and we stand amazed. Thank you, Father, for being a saving God. Thank you, God, for being a resurrecting God. Thank you, God, for doing miracle after miracle after miracle. God, the word of God says that when one comes back to the Father, all of heaven turns up. Can we sound like heaven in this room? Can we give him glory in here? There was one snatched back from hell and we were
rejoice with them that rejoice. Woo. 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 God, we give your name glory. We celebrate the fact that you started on the greatest journey ever. If you're in this room or you're watching online, be sure that you capture that number because that's how we are able to get in touch with you and give you more information about the decision you made. All I'm going to ask you to do is pray with me and then we're going to take a quick moment to worship. Can y'all repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess you as the Lord of my life and I give you permission to reign dethrone every other idol I love you God and I give your name glory in Jesus name we declare we decree and amen we declare can we just give God some glory in this room for allowing us to make the greatest decision ever let's just take a moment to worship and reflect on all that God has done Hey, I pray the message you just watched was really transformative for you. I pray it blessed your life. And I want to stay connected with you. So make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Send this to a friend if it really touched you and you believe it will be helpful for them. And be sure to follow me at Dr. Jackie Green on all social media. And DrJackieGreen.com has all the latest and greatest. Staying up to date with all the, I have devos and just all kinds of stuff that you want to be in on. I love you. See you soon.